Detective Phil Stoddard, S-T-O-D-D-A-R-D. -D -D. I work for the Cobb County Police Department um, with the Crimes Against Persons Unit. What was the victim's name? The victim's name was Cooper Harris. And how old was he at the time of death? I'm 20, approximately 22 months. The cause of death in this case is going to be hyperthermia. It was listed as a homicide. The child woke, the family awoke you know, around 6.30 in the morning. Um, the child's father is Justin Ross Harris. Do you um, see Mr. Harris here in the courtroom? Yes, I do. Mr. Harris is sitting at the defendant's table to my left wearing an orange Cobb County jumpsuit. The person to wake up that morning was Justin's wife, um, Leanna. And what time did she wake up? She woke up around 6.30 in the morning. What, what time did uh, Cooper, the child, and the defendant wake up or actually get out of bed? They got out, out of bed. It will be after, eight or after 7 o'clock. Where did uh, Leanna, the mother of the child, go that day? Leanna left um, for work about 7.15 that morning. And what did the defendant and Cooper do that morning? That morning they sat in bed. Um, he watched some cartoons. Um, then they got up and got dressed, and Justin um, drove them to work. They stopped at the Chick-fil-A, located on Paces Ferry at Cumberland Parkway. Now, did the child have any medical conditions or anything that affected his uh, abilities to walk, talk, or anything of that nature? No. Everyone has said the child was normal that morning. Um, no medications, no medical conditions, um, nothing of note. The defendant worked at the Home Depot. And which office uh, with Home Depot did he work at? He worked at the place that's called the Tree House. It's at 2600 Cumberland. It's kind of annex of the store support center. Where was Cooper taken care of while the defendant and his wife were at work? It's called Little Apron Academy. Um, it's a daycare. It's connected to um, the store support center, which is on Paces Ferry Road. Whose responsibility was it usually to take the child to the daycare? Normally, Justin would take him to the daycare. Okay. Mm -hmm. So taking him to daycare that day would not have been out of the routine? Not at all. When he takes the child in his car, what type of car did the defendant drive? He had a 2011 Hyundai Tucson. And, can you just, and what type of car seat did the child, was the child restrained in? Um, Cooper was in <coughs> that morning, and most of the mornings, Cooper was in a rear-facing child seat. And that rear-facing child seat, was that behind the passenger side, behind the driver's side, or in the middle of the back seat? It was in the middle of the back seat. How far or how close, what was the distance between the driver's <coughs> seat, approximately, and the head area end of the car seat? Um, six inches at the most. Now, you said that the defendant and the child stopped at Chick-fil-A. They did. Was that out of the ordinary, or is that something that they did uh, on special occasion? And no. Um, Justin stated that this happens two or three times a month, um, and they, you know, it was a daddy-son time. It was a special occasion for them. About what time did they get to Chick-fil-A? Around 9 o'clock. And did you confirm that through uh, the defendant or other means? Um, both. Um, the defendant stated that, you know, they went to Chick-fil-A first. I was able to pull cash register receipts from the Chick-fil-A and surveillance video. Okay. Mm -hmm. On the surveillance video at Chick-fil-A, um, how did the child appear? The child appeared wide awake and happy. About what time did they leave the, the Chick-fil-A? About 9.19. And where did they go from the Chick-fil-A? From the Chick-fil-A, um, they drove right to um, Justin's work, 2600 Cumberland. What is the distance from the Chick-fil-A to his place of work? It's approximately 0.6 miles. So it's not now when the defendant, um, is there a, a stoplight where he ends up having to make a decision about whether to turn to go to uh, the daycare or go to work? There is. Okay. And about how far from the Chick-fil-A is that stoplight? Uh, a tenth of a mile, two tenths of a mile. And how would you get to that stoplight coming from the Chick-fil-A? Coming from the Chick-fil-A, you make an immediate right-hand turn. Um, you then take a U-turn in front of the Home Depot and immediately move over to the left-hand lane um, to take a left turn on a Paces Ferry. Confirm what time the defendant arrived at work. I court. did. And what time was that? Around 9.25. How did you confirm that? We confirmed it through the timestamp on surveillance video for that parking lot. What time did the defendant leave work that day? The defendant left work that day at um, it would be 4.15, 4.16 p.m. After he left work that day, um, he was going to meet up with a couple of his friends and go see a movie. What time was the movie that they were going to see? Five o'clock movie. Do you remember what the movie was? <laughs> 22 Jump Street. Did the defendant actually make it to the movie theater? He did not. How far is it from the workplace where he left at 4.15, 4.16 that afternoon 
to the place where his car eventually stopped? A little less than two miles. And how far would the movie theater have been uh, from the place where he stopped? Uh, not far, a um, couple minutes at the most. When the defendant arrived or pulled over from the evidence that you have, um, what did he do? When the defendant pulled over and was at the Acres Mill, he pulled directly into a um, shopping center, um, Acres Mill Shopping Center, and parked his car in the middle of the roadway. Um, he exited his vehicle and popped open the rear door to his vehicle. Um, he entered into the rear door, um, removed Cooper from the car seat, removed Cooper from the car seat and then placed him on the pavement um, next to the vehicle. Um, he got down next to Cooper. What was confirmed from the uh, law enforcement and witnesses on scene, what was the condition of Cooper? And Cooper was deceased. What type of establishment is this? You said it was a little business area? It's like a strip mall. Okay. And what was the, the, the stores or area that he pulled into near? He pulled in near next to like a restaurant. Did you or did another officer speak with the first person to come into contact with the defendant? Yes. Okay. And what was his name, if you remember? Um, Anthony Polanamo. The witnesses and everyone described that he pulled into it at a high rate of speed and they heard squealing tires when the vehicle came to a stop. Um, Justin immediately exited the vehicle. Um, he seemed upset. His behavior was considered erratic um, by many of the witnesses. Um, he would be yelling and screaming, oh my God, what have I done? My child is dead. And then he would stop and he would just have a blank look on his face and just stand there. Um, when he pulled Cooper out of the vehicle, he placed him down on the, on the hot pavement. When he did that, did anyone assist him in getting the child out to the paper? Yes, Anthony did. When they did that, how did Anthony describe the defendant's behavior when they put the child on the pavement? When they put the child on the pavement, um, he said it, it looked like Justin was messing around. He, he didn't know what Justin was doing. And he's like, he goes, w w we need to do CPR. We need to do something for the child. Mm -hmm. um, Justin kind of looked at him, and then he just stopped. Um, what, did miss, what did Anthony do? Anthony started CPR. When Anthony started CPR on the defendant's son, what did the defendant do? When Anthony started, um, the defendant stood up, uh, walked to the other side of the vehicle, and got on his phone. When the defendant, after he separated himself from the child and got on the phone, um, did he appear to be, per the witnesses, talking on the phone? Yes. Did you talk to officers who actually encountered him? Yes, I did. What did they say he was doing on the phone? He stated he was telling somebody on the phone that his child had died. Now, when you spoke with the defendant, what did he say about actually speaking to somebody on the phone? He said he had um, not gotten anybody on the phone. Um, have you reviewed preliminarily uh, his phone logs? I have. What did those reflect? They reflected three phone calls. What was the first? First phone call was to Leanna. Um, it looked like it was a missed phone call. Um, the second phone call was to the Home Depot Corporate Center, um, their main number. Um, and there was a third phone number, um, and those same one, it was to the Home Depot Corporate Center. And it appeared that this phone number went through, and on his records it said six minutes worth of conversation. Were you able to track back to what, where that would have gone to, this call to the Home Depot? Center? We did. Okay, and where would that have been? It went back to Toddler Room 5 at Little Aprons Academy, where Cooper attended school. So you have phone records suggesting he was on the phone for five or six minutes. Correct. You have the officers stating that he was actually talking to somebody on the phone. Correct. Did you confront him with this when he said that he was not talking to anybody? I did. And what did he say? He said he wasn't talking to anybody on the phone.